The Chatham University campus is unassuming, tucked into a Pittsburgh neighborhood. It sits in an older community with narrow lanes leading into campus and even a cobblestone road nearby. Lining these vintage pathways are many classic elaborate houses. Some are still used by private citizens, while many others have been purchased by the university and are now used as dorms or classroom buildings. By just visiting the athletic and fitness center near the school's entrance, visitors to campus may miss many of these buildings, including one of the most historic in the PAC. Just down the road from Chatham's Athletic and Fitness Center is the Mellon House. Acquired by businessman Andrew Mellon in 1917, the estate became one of the most extravagant in the country. Andrew W. Mellon, he had um, been divorced um, a few years earlier and I think he wanted to get away from the home that he had before and those memories. So he was looking for a new um, place to raise his children. He had two kids, Paul and um, Elsa. And so in 1917, as I mentioned, they, he bought this, this home on Woodland Road. Um, he did have really extensive renovations done to it. Immediately inside the front door hangs a painting of Mellon himself. It has become a Chatham tradition to wave at Mellon as you enter, as a greeting for entering his estate. Wandering around the main hall, his eyes seemingly follow your every step. The countless large rooms make it clear that Mellon was a man of wealth. After all, during the 1920s, he was the third richest American, only behind oil tycoon John D. Rockefeller and industrialist Henry Ford. As a result, he was able to live a life of luxury and comfortably added some notably modern and sometimes strange characteristics to his home. Whatever he wanted that was available, he really could have. Um, he had an intercom system, a elevator, um, there was an indoor vacuuming system, um, all the, you know, basically the most um, modern technologies that were available he could have. There was a radio system inside the um, building. He also had some like very odd sort of interesting features in um, the building added on the second floor, um, along with the bedrooms and office space, he had a aluminum room that had aluminum bookshelves, aluminum cupboards, aluminum draperies. So some really sort of interesting and very modern features in the home. The grounds also included tennis courts, a pond, and delicate gardens. Mellon added a bowling alley in the basement adjacent to arguably the most prominent feature of the house. Probably the most spectacular um, feature that he added was the swimming pool. It um, had uh, Gustavino tile. That tile is still there today and it's part of the Mellon boardroom which they put a lot of effort into preserving when they um, redid the room in 2007. Um, as the boardroom and they covered over the swimming pool area. It was used by students as a swimming pool um, when, right after it was acquired by the school in um, 1940. It was one of the first indoor pools in the country, but I mean, if you think about it, Mellon, he, Andrew W. Mellon was the third richest man in America at that point. If there was something that could be had, he could have it. They had actually stopped using the swimming pool when they built the athletic and fitness center. So it was used from, you know, 1940 up until, you know, the early 2000s as the school's swimming pool. The Mellons had a short stay in the home, which at the time of its official donation to Chatham had already become a part of the campus. Actually, Andrew W. Mellon only lived in there full time for four years. Um, he became um, the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury in 1921, and when he did, he moved out and went to Washington, D.C., and so they were only there in Pittsburgh um, on and off. It wasn't his full-time residence. Now, after his son was married, Paul Mellon, he did um, give it to him as somewhere where he could live as well, but I don't believe Paul even really lived there for a very long time and after his father's death um, Paul um, obtained a home in Virginia and that was when he um, decided to give it to the school. Andrew W. Mellon was a trustee of okay. the college so he had had connections to the college before 
Many other buildings on campus were private homes. It's how the campus has been made up over the years is with these various um, private homes. When the Mellon estate was donated to the college, it originally served as a dorm. The various shapes, sizes, and locations of the rooms gave each student a unique experience, different than the uniform living conditions at most colleges today. The dorm rooms were on the second and third floor. Right away, they used the first floor for more events, and I think there was an alumni office on that floor. But, but yeah, the, the place for students was second, third floor. And from what I've read, it was upperclassmen, and it was um, a special privilege to be up on the, that floor, or to be in Mellon, because it was such an extravagant place to live. So, you know, people would clamor to be, to be in that building in particular. Presently, the building houses much of the Chatham administration. It's been the center of campus for pretty much since 1940 when it was acquired. It's, it's basically just like the most distinctive building on campus. The, the Tudor style architecture is just so striking. It's what people remember about Chatham. Thank mm -hmm. you.